Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us for the third Sunday in Ordinary Time and welcome to any visitors that may be joining us today. Check your bulletin for the important and interesting topics. St. Bede Open House is January 29th. Applications and private tours are now available. St. Bede Parent Education Spring 2023 classes begin the week of January 31st. Bede Fest 2023 Havana Nights is Saturday, February the 4th. And we're honored to welcome back the Partnership for Reentry Program after Masses on Saturday, February the 4th, and all morning Masses on Sunday, February 5th. Mark your calendars to come, admire, and purchase a special art piece that speaks to your heart. Our celebrant this morning is our pastor, Father Jim Bevacqua. Join us in singing our entrance hymn number 559, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, number 559. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You know, sometimes I think it's a crazy world out there. We had the uh, horrific shooting in Monterey Park last night that killed, last I heard, 10 people, put another 10 uh, in the hospital. Uh, so we want to pray for those people in a special way, their family members. Uh, we pray for uh, whatever happened in Alhambra and for an end to violence in the world. So my brothers and sisters, as believers, as people who put our trust in the Lord and worship Him, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. <clears throat>
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the end he has glorified the seaward road, but the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness, for there is no gloom where but now there was distress. Anguish has taken wing. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united, united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel 
and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee and the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light and those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. It's a uh, new year, it's time for a spiritual inventory, and I'm wondering how are we doing? Are we growing in our faith? It's a good question. Are we growing in our faith? There is a guy by the name of Stanley Hauerwas. Uh, he uh, is Methodist, longtime respected moral theologian at Duke University, and he was invited to speak some years ago at the University of Notre Dame in Indiana. And he looked out at the audience, most of them were Catholics, and he said, you Catholics, you go to mass all the time. What do all these masses do for you? Good question. I wonder myself, how have all these masses that we attend changed our lives? What evidence is there that, uh, you know, what we do at mass uh, each Sunday has any effect on ourselves and those people around us? In coming to mass, do we grow in our faith and are we better able to be united people of God. And then there's a great spiritual writer in the U.S. by the name of Father Ronald Rollheiser. He writes for Angelus, which is an archdiocese magazine that comes out uh, every, every couple of weeks. And he uh, once explained that it is one thing to impress somebody with acts of faith and virtue and Holiness is an entirely different thing to motivate somebody to actually change their life, their habits, and their decisions. And those things that so often stand in the way of being a saint. What stands in the way of being a saint? What do I mean? Well, in the second reading today, we heard that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. We are called to be united not divided. United, not divided. Now, I know there are people who pray every day. Some of them go to mass every day, very involved, and yet the slightest thing that somebody else does bothers the heck out of them. So easily offended. And I always say, get over yourself. Stop being so sensitive. Grow up. God and the spiritual life are so much bigger than petty slights and people who irritate us. And the gossip, good Lord. I always say so many people have too much free time on their hands. Do something good with all the free time and stop focusing on the faults of other people. And that goes for me too, okay? I'm a work in process, just like everybody else. 
Uh, I celebrate Mass every day, and I see my sins that I continue to repeat. I also cannot be so easily offended. I gotta grow up. God and the spiritual life are so much bigger than petty slights. We are called to be united, not divided, humble and not full of ourselves. We're not, we're not saints yet. We're trying to be some of us, but we are still lacking. We're still grasping for the holiness needed to change the world and bring others closer to Jesus and be more united. That spiritual writer, Father uh, Ronald Rollheiser, tells the story about the great Indian pacifist, Gandhi. Gandhi. One day, a woman approached Gandhi and told him about her daughter who was addicted to sweets. And her addiction to sweets was causing health issues. And the mother asked Gandhi if he would speak to her daughter. Gandhi told her to bring her daughter to him in three weeks. So after three weeks, the mother brought the daughter back to Gandhi. He took the girl aside, spoke to her for a while, then he brought her back to her mother, and the girl said that she was now ready to quit eating sweets. And the mother was shocked. And then she asked Gandhi, she said, you know, why didn't he speak to her daughter three weeks earlier? Gandhi explained that three weeks ago, he also ate too many sweets and he needed three weeks to quit. We call ourselves Catholic, but do we act like it? Are we united or are we divided? Do we have an agenda? We have to do more than just tell people what they should or should not be doing. We actually have to walk with them and the worthiness of our lives, the way we treat one another at work, at home, at school and among others in our community, all these behaviors will mark how people hear the preaching of our lives. Our actions are the preaching behind our words. And so when our actions unite us, when we treat others as we should be treating them, that will give us spiritual credibility. That will help unite us, not divide us. Do we, this is the question we have to ask ourselves today, do we have the spiritual credibility to bring people together and help us unite as the people of God and bring people closer to Jesus. What do all these masses do for us? Do we open up ourselves to change? Do the masses change us? They should. Please stand for a profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord has promised to hear the prayers of the faithful. 
In faith, we lift our hearts and intentions to him. For the church and her mission to proclaim the kingdom of God in the world today, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide this holy work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all who hold elected office, may God strengthen their efforts in protecting life at all stages. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from the pain of division or disunity, may God's peace prevail and renew a sense of oneness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear God. our prayer. For this faith community, may God help us proclaim the gospel well with our words and with our actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. hear our prayer. For those burdened by illness or despair, especially Tony Gillespie, the Kaiser family, Nancy Gillespie, and Darren Cooler. May God's mercy reach their hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have passed away from this life, especially Paul Especia, Dwayne Mickelson, Heidi Kaiser, Wynne DeVell, Megan Cooler, Sandy Lowry, Jorge Andres Rodriguez, and Chuck Dowd. May God soon welcome them into his kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all that have died or been injured in the shooting in Monterey Park and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray in a special way for the Dowd family, the Fortin family, the Devell family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we ask that you listen to our needs this day and answer them in accordance with your will. We pray all things through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Of the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Remember the people of St. Bede Parish. Remember the Van Dyke family, Grace Mercado. Remember David and Jacqueline Lira and their family. 
and bring the church to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember Christina Emmanuel, Wynne DeVell, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Blessed Bede and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. communion, the choir will be singing a, a song in Spanish, Esto Les Digo by Kinley Lang. The English translation is, where two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be also.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for your support. Thanks for being here. Uh, special gratitude to our ushers, Sacrosin, extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion, lectors, uh, and our altar servers, and our choir, off the charts choir. How about a big round of applause for everybody? <laughs> So uh, I try to go to games here and there. Uh, this Wednesday night is the Loyola versus St. Francis varsity uh, basketball game. So uh, I always have to play Switzerland. So half the game I'll sit on one side, half the game on the other. So that's, that's how I have to do things. Uh, and I support both teams and uh, both of them are doing well and I'm very proud of them. And I uh, uh, am grateful for that. So. Uh, just uh, everybody have a blessed week. We'll continue to pray for those uh, poor people that uh, were traumatized by the uh, shooting in Monterey Park last night. Uh, we pray for safety, for unity, not division. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Join us in singing our, our final hymn, number 549, All Creatures of Our God and King, number 549.